Actual People. Time Magazine is out with its choices. It is called the 13th Annual Power List of the 100 Titans, Pioneers, Artists, Leaders, and Icons Who Shape Our World. Joining me now is Radhika Jones. She is the deputy editor of Time, and she's the one who I hear is in charge of this. Uh, welcome. Thank you for having me, Charlie. Now, how is this list different, say? from last year, the year before, the year before, is composition, is recognition of certain kinds of things making this special? Well, the list is about influence, and it doesn't really bow to any particular metrics. It's not about wealth or uh, necessarily number of fans or box office or any of the usual things that, that we, mm. the, the metrics that we count on to sort of tell us who's on top. So we debate a lot internally at time. We start thinking about the list uh, four or five months out, and, and we just try to think very broadly about who is sort of owning their field, who is rising, who is having influence, not just perhaps in, in um, a single lane, but sort of across boundaries, and also who are the people you know, we're a news magazine and we cover every aspect of Politics, culture, culture and life. science, and, technology. Exactly. So who are the people in each of those areas who, who really are, are starting conversations and making us, us think? And, you know, there's a way to do a list like this where you sort of have the same 90 people year after year, but we really want to keep it fresh because we want it to feel like a snapshot of the moment. Um, and. And so we take a lot of pride in making sure that every year the list has a new kind of energy. But at the same time, there are people who perennially appear here, like the President of the United States. The President of the like United the States. Like the President of Russia. Yes, uh, yes. Like um, Angela Merkel. Exactly. Although what's interesting about those three examples, yes, they've been on the list many times, but, um, but the, the aspects of their leadership that we choose to highlight every year change. Um, and that's what keeps it fresh for us, and I hope what keeps it fresh for the reader. Um, you know, Angela Merkel had a very different year this past year yes, than she indeed. had yeah. earlier in because her tenure. Because the refugees. And exactly. The migrants. And the same goes for Putin, um, who found himself having influence in, in Syria in, and exactly, in the Middle East um, yeah. in different ways. So, so that's what we try to pay attention to. I have some favorites. Excellent. I want to hear them. Stefan Carey. I yeah. mean, he has changed basketball in a way. He's had a phenomenal year, a record-breaking year a record for an NBA year. team. That's right. Uh, and he's made the three-point shot. I know. And let me tell you, I resisted it for a while because I grew up in the oh. era. Of, I grew up in the era of Michael Jordan. Oh, prejudice, prejudice, prejudice. And I just, prejudice. you know, and I thought, well, but how, how could anyone? But he is phenomenal, and in a totally different way. Um, and people really look up to him. He's become a role model. Um, we had Misty Copeland write the piece about him. Oh, yeah, another right. legend. Yeah. Um, and they. Uh, they are friends. It's interesting and, because I've written these. Right. Uh, how you choose people to write. For example, when I was on the list, you chose Michael Bloomberg to write. Here is Leonardo DiCaprio's on the year on the list, and he gets John Kerry. You guys choose we who choose. writes. Not that they say, "Oh, I'd like for John Kerry Leo right. to say," um, but you choose. Why John Kerry writing about an actor named Leo DiCaprio? Well. The answer to that is that we wanted to highlight a very particular aspect of, of Leonardo DiCaprio's influence. Um, we all saw him win an Oscar this year. It, it was a long-awaited moment for right. someone who's one of the greatest actors of his generation. And that's, of course, a huge area of influence for him um, in the world of cinema. But he's also a very powerful environmentalist. Um, his foundation he has been around. He was in Paris and made a speech? That's right. He's, he's, his foundation for conservation has been around since 1998. And he and John Kerry have worked together on a number of things, and, and John Kerry's piece brings out that side of him, which we hope will be instructive to readers. Yeah, here's what's interesting, too. This is uh, Mark Zuckerberg and his wife. Mark has been on before. He has. His wife is a, is a highly regarded MD, That's doctor. Right. That's uh, right. And they're here together, and they're written by Bill and Melinda Gates, another couple of equal weight and talent and, and shared ambition. This was a fun one to think about. Yeah. Um, of course, this was the year that Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan uh, wrote an open letter to their new daughter right. um, talking about their plans to fund an initiative um, that would funnel money toward innovation and moonshots. And, and, and so we wanted them to be on the list together because we felt like they represented a new generation of philanthropy and activism. Here's another one that I like a lot. 
Ta-Nehisi Coates. And Brian Stevenson writes about him. Brian Stevenson, a brilliant lawyer who's done a huge amount uh, to bring sort of justice to people who had gotten people off death row and other places. And he writes about Ta-Nehisi Coates, that yes. this is an essential writer for America right now. It is. Um, and uh, Brian Stevenson, as the founder of the Equal Justice right. Initiative, is very well poised to say that. Uh, Lynn manuel Miranda, just showing you all these people. And this is great because I got all these covers here. Lynn manuel Miranda, um, written about by J.J. Abrams, who made Star Wars. J.J. Abrams had a really big year. Right. Possibly Lynn manuel Miranda is one of the only people who had a bigger year. Um, but they're both world creators, and they make us see the world in different ways. And to have J.J.'s voice on Lynn manuel was really special. What's the ratio of men to women? Uh, there are 40 women on the list. And 60 men. 60 men. Yeah. And, and how many of them are non-Americans? Uh, I think it's about half and half in terms yeah. of where they were born. Uh, and, and what's the largest group in terms of, is it politics? Is it science? Is it culture? It's, it's roughly politics and, and sort of world leaders. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of people who wear two hats or three hats or even four hats. Mm. Um, Pope Francis is on the list? He is on the list. Now why is he on the list? Uh, give me a good reason why he shouldn't, shouldn't be. be. I can't. <laughs> I love this Pope. But you have Joe Biden, a good we had, Catholic. We had Joe Biden write about, about him. him. Yeah. Um, well, of course, as we know, one of the big trips on the Pope's itinerary this past year was his trip to America. Right. Um, and he was hosted in D.C. for a while, and we thought that Joe Biden would have some good things to say and about speaking that. Speaking of Joe Biden, there's his wife, Dr. Jill Biden, mm -hmm. and she writes about uh, Dennis McQuaggy. Yes. Uh, who is he? He uh, started a hospital. He's a, he's a gynecological surgeon, and he started a hospital treating um, uh, victims of rape um, in war in the Congo. And it's a hugely necessary, unfortunately, necessary service. Um, Here's another cultural player, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. Um, and Kendrick Lamar's piece was written by Alicia Garza, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner. Who did you choose to write about her? Uh, Wayne Maines. Um, not a name you probably know, but he uh, has a daughter who's transgender, and he writes from the perspective of a parent about the influence of a, a person as high profile as Caitlyn Jenner coming out and having the courage to be herself. Uh, Mark Edwards is here and Mona Hannah Atisha. Two more names you probably haven't heard. Right. Um, they were two of the people who uh, blew the whistle on the situation in Flint, Michigan. Right. Um, Dr. Mona Hannah Atisha is a pediatrician. She was the first person to provide evidence that children's lead levels were rising. And Mark Edwards was a researcher um, who early on took